Climbing gear can cost hundreds of dollars and because of that you want to make sure that once you've topped out your route you can get down with all of your gear on you so you don't have to keep spending money to replace it. To do that you have to know how to properly repel with a bag. What's up guys my name is Marcus this is Ascensionism and today we're going to be going over two different methods for how to repel while wearing either a backpack or any other kind of haul and gear bag. Like I said, this is important so that you can not only get all your gear to the bottom of the route, but also so that you can do so safely. Because wearing a bag and having tens of pounds of gear on you makes the situation more difficult and more dangerous. So both of the techniques covered in this video can help you mitigate that danger. So the first technique, you can see I've just got my backpack here. The first technique is super simple and super explanatory. We're not gonna spend too much time on it. If you've got a backpack and you need to repel, you can put the backpack on like you normally would, lock yourself into your repel, step off, and there you go, right? You're repelling, you can lower down. This is a good way if you're doing like a short multi-pitch climb, you don't have a lot of gear. This is probably how you're gonna wanna get down the climb. Uh, it just makes your life way easier. However, this doesn't work in every scenario. And that's because the weight of your pack can become a big factor especially if you're doing a rappel like I'm so when I do my rappel here right you can see I've got my feet pretty firmly on the wall and this wall isn't even truly vertical and that helps me control the rappel but if my pack were a lot heavier or if I didn't have my feet on the wall there's the chance that the pack would start to pull me backwards which messes up my balance it makes my rappel more dangerous and it makes me unable to really control myself so in those scenarios, you want to use a different kind of repel that we're going to go over later. But first, I couldn't find anywhere online that mentioned what that kind of threshold is for how heavy your pack should be before you switch from wearing it like a backpack to doing our next type of repel. So I thought it'd be fun to hop over. Just I'm going to move over there a little bit. I'm going to set up a hanging repel and we're just going to run some experiments. So I'm set over here, just a little bit different from where I normally film. Um, as you can see, I've got a backpack here and out of frame, I've got some weights. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the backpack up with different weights and then I'm gonna sit myself in a hanging rappel on this rope. Um, so my feet won't be touching anything. And I'm gonna see how many pounds I need to put in the backpack for it to tip me over backwards. So let's get to it. So first up, I've just got 10 pounds in the bag. I'll close that up here. Put that on. Now, some of this will also depend on how your bag is loaded up. Um, and it'll also depend on kind of the portion of the bag weight to your body weight. So I weigh about 170 pounds. So obviously 10 pounds will be about five to eight percent of my total body weight so i'm just going to load this up here get myself all set up to repel tighten that up and we'll see if i jump on here so with 10 pounds even with only 10 pounds you can see i'm starting to tip over backwards and i but i can sit up with it it just takes a little more effort Okay, now I've got 20 pounds in the backpack. 20 pounds is kind of a pretty typical weight in your pack for a kind of a day trip. So we'll see how 20 pounds does. If I take off here, okay, uh, with 20 pounds, it's a lot harder for me to sit up. I can still kind of sit in my harness, but if I do the wrong thing, I can really feel the weight dragging me backwards. And it's definitely, definitely not as comfortable as a normal rappel is. Let's go for more. Okay, now I've got 30 pounds in the backpack. 30 pounds is like a full overnight bag. So, but again, a haul bag on a big wall climb can be like 60 to 100 pounds. So 30 pounds isn't unreasonable. It's kind of hard to jump up with this weight, uh, but there we go. So. With 30 pounds, you can kind of see I'm really struggling here to keep my body upright. Um, especially when I try to repel, 
I'm getting very close to tipping over backwards there, guys. I'm also out of shape and not set to carry this much weight right now. But let's add more. Okay, the bag now has 40 pounds in it. We've got it on. Got my rope tightened up here. And once I go up, there we go. Yeah, so with 40 pounds, guys, you can see I really have to work to try to stay in any kind of posture with this rope. If I relax my body, it's just gonna tip me way backwards. Ugh. And it places a lot more pressure on my brake hand. Well, you can see I'm kind of struggling here. Um, and I'm two feet off the ground. So uh, I would not suggest trying to do that in anything other than a very controlled environment like the one I'm in. So again, that was just like, that was a climbing bag. That's a mountain hardware multi-pitch pack. I had it loaded up with 40 pounds worth of gear and on a straight, sorry, I'm a little out of breath here on a straight hanging rappel without my feet touching anything, 40 pounds was enough to tip me over backwards. But guys, I would say even the 20 pound bag would have seriously impaired my ability to rappel. And I weigh, like I said, about 170 pounds. So with a 40 pound pack, you know, you can do a bit of rough math and say that 25% of your body weight is enough to really throw off your ability to rappel. And even a bag that's up to 10% of your body weight is enough to kind of make it difficult and make it maybe unadvisable. So once your bag gets to that weight where it's to the point that you can hardly repel, like you saw me just really struggling to do, you don't want to just wear your pack normally. You want to do what's called a tandem repel. We're going to hop back over there and I'm going to demonstrate how to do a tandem repel. All right guys, so as you can see, I'm back over here now. I've got the rope back set up. I've got oh, the heavy bag and we're gonna demonstrate how to do a tandem rappel. Now for a tandem rappel, you need a few extra pieces of gear. You need two more locking carabiners and two slings, right? These are just standard webbing slings, nothing fancy. Um, this should, you know, carrying a couple spare slings and beaners is kind of a good thing to have in your rack. So just kind of add these if you're gonna to have to do a tandem rappel. So the theory behind a tandem rappel is that instead of wearing the backpack, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bag and I'm gonna suspend it beneath my belay device like that. And then I'm gonna clip myself to the belay device above it. And I'm gonna be able to rappel with it hanging beneath me so that it doesn't pull me off weight like we just saw it do over there. Now, important things to remember here is that you want to use the slings to attach the bag to the rappel device. There are some people who will tandem rappel with the bag attached to their loop. This is super uncomfortable. It pulls your harness down right on your groin. I would not recommend it. Zero out of 10. Don't do this. Always attach the bag to your rappel device. And so we're going to go over how to do that. So it's a really simple setup. You have your two slings here. Now you can see one of the slings I've got is shorter than the other, right? This one's doubled up, whereas this one I've kind of quadrupled and folded it up four times. Um, I'll just demonstrate that super quick. So to get the slings like this, all you do is you just take them like that, kind of fold it in half there, pull it tight. And then for this one, I just left it like that. And for the second one, I'm going to do that another time. Then take your shorter sling, thread it through your belay loop, and just girth hitch it there, right? Just like that, and then take your carabiner, clip it through that. We're gonna leave that for now. We're gonna take the second sling, and we're gonna do basically the same thing with the bag. We're gonna girth hitch the sling through the bag so that it's now supported. Ugh. Just like that and then you're gonna take this you're gonna take the carabiner and you're gonna clip that carabiner to the carabiner that's on your belay device right so that's super important you can see I've got two carabiners here I've got my rope threaded through my belay device like normal 
with a carabiner through the rope and that should be locked. And then attached to that carabiner, I've got a second carabiner that's clipped to the sling that holds my bag. So the bag is now secured to the belay device and it's independent of me. And again, that's important so that it won't be pulling down on me. It'll be pulling down on the belay device. And then I take my second carabiner, clip it through, again, the same carabiner that the bag is attached to. So your master carabiner is attached to the rappel device. The two second locking carabiners are attached to, one's going to myself and the other one's going to my haul bag. And then you can see, I'll just take in the slack here, kind of move my bag off the stairs, which in this case is simulating our cliff. And I can now sit on there and I can repel with the bag dangling nicely between my legs. Now again, this is great because the weight of the bag is sitting on the belay device. It's not on me. Because of the length of the slings, I'm almost sitting on the bag and I can stabilize it with my legs. I can stop it from swinging. I have a little bit of control over its motion and it's not dangling too far beneath me. And I can just lower myself down, easy peasy, until the bag touches the ground. Then I can unweight myself. Hold that up here, move you guys back to kind of a more normal filming position. So that is how to perform a tandem rappel, which is what you want to do with any bag that's more than 25% of your body weight. Now things, important considerations when performing a tandem rappel, sorry, I'm just going to unclip myself from this here is that you do have a lot of weight dangling beneath you. So you really can't ascend the rope um, once, like once you've gone past a certain point, it takes a lot of effort to haul yourself back up that line. So I wouldn't recommend trying it. Another thing to consider is once you, if you're doing like a multi-pitch rappel, once you reach another set of anchors, it's handy to have either another sling or even just another carabiner so that you can attach the bag to a set of anchors before you detach it from the rappel device so that you don't ever risk dropping your gear. But as you can see, pretty simple, pretty low maintenance. It just takes a couple extra pieces of equipment. Those are my two methods for rappelling with a bag. Once again, I'm Marcus, this is Ascensionism. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.